Hello and welcome to Vinslov Academy. In the last lecture, we saw how we could take a file from FileZilla and upload it into our Splunk Enterprise. So in this lecture, we'll build on top of what we learned in part two of how to set up a universal forwarder on our local machine and make it talk to our Splunk Enterprise, which is currently running in a virtual box on a Kali Linux distribution system. So here we have the universal forwarder from our main machine, the Windows, which has last phoned home to the Splunk Enterprise until 12 days. So what we're going to do now is to con make the right configs for this to send uh, data and basically logs from the Windows machine into our Splunk Enterprise before we then restart and turn this on again, such that we can see that these are being sent. So first of all, you need to navigate on your machine where the universal forwarder is installed into the Splunk universal forwarder folder under etc. system local. In here, you <coughs> sorry, you will find the input.conf file. This you will open and you will just choose any text editor that should be fine. And then you see right here that this is the host name, which is also equal to the machine that is currently uh, talking to our Splunk Enterprise. So in this file, you will be adding something similar to this. So you want to add the monitor uh, config parameter, which is where you're going to monitor changes. So I have made a local uh, log folder in my document folder where I'm going to monitor everything that is going on in there. So you can copy this and basically set it in right here. And then I'm going to call this index local machine. So you need to remember what you're calling this because you also need to create that index within Splunk Enterprise, which we'll do in a minute. So now I'm going to save this like so. And then for good matter, we'll just try to open this and see if it's saved. And yes, it is. So what we need to do now to enable our uh, universal forwarder is to head into search. Here we will type services, which we also did in part two of this tutorial series. And in services, we will go down and then we will find the Splunk universal forwarder. So let's see. Here it is. And right now it is not running because the status is empty, which means it's not running. It will have this running if it is. So what we are going to do here is to first type refresh and then just start. And then the Splunk folder will start up once again. And we should be able to see that it is again phoning home to our Splunk Enterprise. So while this starts up, we will head over to Splunk Enterprise here. And then we will go to settings and then we will go under forwarding and receiving. And here we'll configure a new receiver. So we'll just add new. And here we'll just choose the basic port, which were the port we also used in part two when we installed the universal forwarder on our host machine. So we'll just save this. And now the status is enabled for this. Then we will head over here and then we will click indexes because we need to create this index that we chose. So we'll say new index right here. And then we will just copy this here so that we are sure that the name is exactly the same. So local machine. And we will not config any of these because we will just use this and as an example, but there is a lot of things that you can configure obviously. So we'll just click save. And now it shows up right here. And then we will just head over to this and then we will say forwarding, no, let's see, for a management because now this should have started up because this is running now. And then when we refresh this, there might be a little delay before this starts to phone home because we just restarted it. And as you see now, we now have one client 
communicating and it phoned home to the Splunk Enterprise a few seconds ago. So that is nice. So now we will just head over to the folder that we told the forwarder to monitor. So we'll just enter this here. And now we are in the folder. So I will just be creating a new file, just a text file. And I will say hello. And I can also open this and say hello Splunk and save this. So now we have created a text file within the folder that we have just told our universal forward to monitor. So now it should have registered that we have done something within this folder and send it to our Splunk Enterprise for locking within the index. So if we click here, just to head back, then we will click search and reporting. And in here we need to choose the index. And in here we will say local machine and it pops up here. And we'll basically just search for the last 24 hours. And as you see, we have one event and it says hello Splunk and we can click in on this. And it registered that in this particular folder we created the hello.txt and it prints the value here, so hello Splunk. So this is a way that you can make your universal forwarder to communicate with Splunk Enterprise such that you can have multiple machines and collect the logs and the events happening on these into the Splunk Enterprise instead of just manually capturing a file and then send it and upload it as we did in part 3. So see you next time here on Winslow Academy.